Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Um, we've got an absolute bombshell of news coming from Twitter based on the prominent leaker Midori who has been leaking information about a ton of JRPGs. They started off leaking Sega and Atlas games and then moved into Square Enix games which is where they kind of started to affect uh, myself and other Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy fans. As most of you probably know, I'm a huge Dragon Quest fan, and I also love Final Fantasy IX. And some of the biggest announcements have been that we're going to be getting Dragon Quest HD 2D Remake as the entire Erdrick Trilogy, which is Dragon Quests 1 through 3. They've also been mentioning Final Fantasy IX, which was leaked quite a while ago now. More details have been leaked more recently by Midori. I'm gonna stop with the Japanese pronunciation of Midori, because Midori has been absolutely exposed online. Now, normally I'm not a fan of people getting exposed and people's personal lives and stuff like that being leaked on the internet. That is just awful practice by anyone. And we'll get into the details as to whether the modern era of gaming needs leakers to get news across or if we're better off without leakers near the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Or if you're not interested in the Midori news itself, just skip to that timestamp near the end of the video. But let's get into the allegations here. So we got Red Muffler Man here on Twitter saying, Okay, so Midori was just pretending to be a Japanese girl on the internet. They aren't hurting anyone. And then we see the, uh... Why don't you have a seat on that stool over there for And abuse allegations coming out. And he's got the lightning piccolo there. Like, this is some serious shit. Then we've got Captain KO on YouTube saying, The fact that we now know Midori is just a regular white man makes this tweet even funnier. And, and the post itself isn't really of any concern, but it's Midori's reply to it and series of replies to the allegations that we're going to cover here. So, Midori says, I will not deny the rumored information that the account that has been known to many as Midori is indeed Mystic Distance. I think many have been aware of this for a long time now, but if they were, they chose to say nothing. I appreciate this. So, apparently this Mystic Distance person on Twitter is a known... Why don't you have a seat on that stool over there for me? As well as a abuser, which is fucking terrible, but he's not really making any mention of those claims. Many of the claims in the document are false, they said. Most of the information I've received has come from people who have decided to share it with me. I have only shared information because I did not want people sharing information with me and for me to not do the same. I won't spend most of my time denying many of the claims made in the document. I think it's pointless to do so. Whether the claims are true or not, if it's over, I think it should be as respectfully as possible to all sides involved. I'm not going to fight against this. So not necessarily denying any of the uh, have a seat on that stool over there for allegations either. Instead, I will dedicate this thread to discussing the reasons behind why I made this account. This account was made to market my love for Atlas and Sega titles in a way that was not linked to me. I did not expect this account to ever have become as notable as it has. Being able to report on Atlas and Sega in my own way while not being constrained to who I was before was liberating for me. I was very happy to hopefully have shared information on a developer that is very integral to who I am over the past year. When I made the account, I wasn't thinking of a gender or even a region for the persona of this account. The intention was not to fool people into thinking I'm an employee to get inside information on Atlas or Sega titles. This is why I do not refer to myself as a leaker. Everyone refers to you as a leaker, Midori. That's... It doesn't matter what you refer to yourself as in some, in some instances. It's, uh... It's what everyone refers to you as. The same with being a, uh... Why don't you have a seat on that stool over there for me? This is not to absolve myself of responsibility. I'm extremely sorry to all the people who have followed this account and now feel misled and are questioning who Midori even really is. The Midori persona as it is may not be a real person, but it is what I believe to be an accurate representation of a real person, albeit in a particularly strange way that I wish I did not use, but it was never used to manipulate anyone or to appear more credible. That is... I would say 100% a lie, because if somebody who was a... Why don't you have a seat on that stool over there for me? 
and an abuser, known abuser on, on the internet, was dropping these facts, uh, I can guarantee they would not get as much publicity as uh, Midori has. Persona was never used to catfish anyone or garner more followers. In, on a, in all honesty, I decided on this Persona at random. There was never an intention behind it. And as I have stated previously, no monetary gain has ever been made from this account. This is a bit of a personal segue, but I started using this account after finally being consistently prescribed ADHD medication. And if you knew me before, I think that it'll explain a lot about how the behaviors on this account are much more stable than my previous one. I do believe that the callout post that has been made is targeted. I do not believe that the post that has been written is in good faith, nor does it represent the purpose of this account. I believe the person or persons behind it did not have positive intentions. I mean, obviously, they're exposing you for who you are. If you are an absolute piece of shit, to people in real life or on the internet and you don't want to be held accountable for those actions, for your own actions and who you are and you just make a dumper account to basically uh, try and live your life as normal as possible without the responsibilities of your previous actions, you're kind of a piece of crap. Obviously certain things, like I'm not a big fan of like cancel culture and stuff like that. If you've said or done things in the past a long ass time ago, people change, people grow from their experiences in life. And like, that's not a bad thing. Growing from past experiences, growing in life is absolutely common and is not a bad thing. If you took a post of someone's from 2000, Five or 2012 even, and tried to shit on them right now for something that they said back in, say, 2012, 2004, 2008, whatever. They're a completely different person right now. I know a lot of uh, people say that every 11 years, you're a completely different person, and I know based on your cells breaking down and replacing themselves, I think it's like 11 to 8 years, you're an entirely different person. Now, you still... When it's serious allegations, like being a- Why don't you have a seat on that stool over there for me? And abuse, that's completely different. That is not acceptable behavior in the past or in the present. I do know that, like, obviously if you've served, like, jail time or something like that, you've paid for your crimes, that's up to the person interacting with you, whether they feel comfortable with who you are, and whether you're rehabilitated from, from what, you, what you were and what you served time for in the past. But from my understanding, this person has never served time or anything like that for what they have done. And again, this is all allegations. I don't know whether any of this is true, but this is what everyone is saying. Everyone who knows Midori's previous account and or persona is, is saying the same thing. That they're a... Why don't you have a seat on that stool over there for me? And that they're an abu a known abuser. So... None of this, none of this is looking good. And then recently, you, anyone who's been following Midori knows that uh, they said that they were going to be stopping their leaking. Um, so to kind of mention that, uh, they said, When I made the post I did a few days ago, it wasn't so much that I was worried that my identity getting out would ruin my insider information. I did not really care, in all honesty. I was and still will receive information. I don't know why I called attention to it. But I don't believe that would ever have made a difference in the long run. If you didn't believe it would have made a difference, then why did you make an entirely new account? You knew nobody was going to find you credible or believe anything you said, given who you were in the past. I think as this account continued to grow in notoriety, the truth would have eventually come to light. It would have been impossible to continue like this under a persona for so long. Then why didn't you out yourself? Why did it, why did you wait for somebody else to out you? I do not make the claims that this callout is targeted without merit. I strongly believe that the callout post going around was done to ensure I have no place in the community. I don't believe this was done out of legitimate care for Atlas and Sega fans. Again, I mean, can you blame them? Uh, so here's a post I'm assuming from Discord. I don't want to get into speculation as to who this person is. Um... But I do know that RGT85 said that Midori isn't who we think it is. So I'm not saying that this person on Discord uh, is RGT. I'm just saying that RGT85, underscore 85, check him out on YouTube. Fantastic, dude. Uh, constantly making uh, videos on, uh, like, video reviews on, on newer Switch games and just games in general. And uh, if he's got leaks that he thinks are 100% true, 
Uh, he'll make videos kind of talking about him and stuff. And he said in his previous video that he's got sources as well, but he's not leaking them like Midori is. And he was saying in his most recent video, he hinted at anyways, that uh, Midori is not who we think it is. So I wonder if he knew like this whole time. I'm not saying this person in the, that's bleeped out here in this Discord post is him. I'm just saying... I wonder if he knew this whole time, because obviously he's got some great sources, possibly similar sources to uh, to Midori. So this person said, also I asked around, I'm 95% sure my sources are the same as Midori's. I'm just confused who is telling Midori, or rather why. Like we've known Final Fantasy IX Remake was in a bad shape for two plus years now. I'm confused why anyone feels the need to tell Midori. And then in another post, yeah, uh, your info ends up public though, that's troll as fuck. I have every single Capcom, Square Enix, Epic Games, Microsoft, Sony thing for like six plus years. I do not share with anyone. Sega 2. Why the fuck would you trade leaks? Am I missing something? I learned my lesson on that in 2015 when The World Ends With You 2 got cancelled and I looked like a clown nine years ago. Am I missing something? That's how I get my leaks, but I've openly been told if my shit ever goes public, like even remotely, doesn't even matter if I'm who leaked it. It's so private that if it went public, it is from me. Also, dumb question. Is Midori someone we know because we share sources? And that's just odd. They don't have a few Sega things I do, which means dating a Sega person is, uh, since you definitely have those. Which goes completely against them being Japanese. I dug very deep for four hours tonight, and I'm even more confused now. Not sure I'll ever get a proper answer. Oh, put it all together. That being said, fuck the Nintendo leakers for talking. So, yeah. Obviously, Midori's been exposed. What are your thoughts on that? Let's talk about leaking in general. Now, the gaming industry for, I want to say, the past four years, maybe? I want to say since, like, 2020. I think leaking has been around forever. But since 2020, we've been getting a lot of our news and information from leakers online. And I wanted to really talk about how we used to get gaming news versus how we get gaming news now. So everything is very well uh, controlled and orchestrated by the developers now. And that's not really a bad thing necessarily. Like if we don't know about it, it's because the developers don't want us to know about it. And it's because the game they're working on probably isn't ready for us to know anything about it. Nowadays, we do have like gaming websites and stuff like that where gaming journalists, if you will, reach out to these companies. They enjoy the same presentations like Nintendo Directs and Summer Games Fest and stuff like that that we do. And then they get sometimes exclusive interviews with the developers. They don't get as many details as we would have gotten back when we had gaming magazines. I was a huge fan of gaming magazines growing up. I did a little video on it. It didn't, it didn't do well. Uh, but gaming magazines would go in the trenches for their fans. Now, there was so many different gaming magazines. There was GamePro, there was Game Informer, there was Electronic Gaming Monthly, there was like PC Gamer Magazine, there was Nintendo Power, there was Tips and Tricks. There was so many gaming magazines back in the day, and they were all hungry for the latest details on the upcoming games. Even like official PlayStation magazine, stuff like that. So you would have complete like pages and pages of interviews and information on it on certain hyped upcoming games. And nowadays you don't really see that level of detail when it comes to information on upcoming games. The information we are getting as gamers is not as much as it was back in the day without leakers. It is nice to be able to get a constant stream of gaming information. There are so many games nowadays with independent developers and big time developers alike. We are absolutely drowning in gaming content and news and just games in general. But I think when it comes to a lot of these big name games, we don't get a lot of info until right before or until the games are released. Whereas back in the gaming magazine era, I feel like we got so many details on upcoming games. That's why there's so much like lost media in terms of like early demos of games. Look at, uh, for example, was it Castlevania? I think it was called Resurrection on the Sega Dreamcast. A game that was never released, but there's a complete playable version of the game that's obviously not finished. Like, don't get me wrong, I streamed it. It was, it was missing like 99% of a game. But the fact that we have information about that 
and and there's game screenshots like in in classic gaming magazines there's tons of screenshots of games that were never ever released even if you got like the final fantasy ultimania collection the one with final fantasy 7 in it you'll see early screenshots of a 2d super nes era looking final fantasy 7 game that looks Nothing like what Final Fantasy... It looks more like... Honestly, it looks more like Star Ocean on the Super NES than it does Final Fantasy VII. But all this stuff we knew about in gaming magazines because they would leak that stuff. Whereas nowadays, we don't really hear about it until years and years later or unless things have been leaked by leakers. Nowadays, if the leaker leaked something like that, we would be, we'd be like, okay, that leaker was absolute bullshit because that is not what Final Fantasy VII ended up being, but it was at one time what the game was going to be. So you kind of got to take the bad with the good. Back then, you had a bunch of information that wasn't always necessarily correct, just like now, but most of the time, if we were being told information back then, and now, if we are being told information by the developers, it's 100% factual. You know what I mean? Unless you got some Peter Molyneux fucking No Man's Sky shit coming out. Uh, for those of you that don't know what I mean, when No Man's Sky first came out, there were so many promises, and none of it was true when the game first launched. I think now of it, now pretty much all of it is what the game was originally supposed to be at launch with all the patches and updates. But, uh, yeah, at the time of launch, that was not the case. But now with leakers, we've got stuff that may not necessarily be true at all. As a fan, you want to know as much information as soon as possible. And you can't blame fans for being like that. They've always been like that. That is the whole reason why people subscribe to these gaming magazines in the past. It's why people follow these leakers on Twitter. So, I guess at the end of the day, what do you guys think? Is leaking bad or good for the gaming community? And is leaking bad or good for game developers? I think it's bad for developers, but I'm kind of torn on whether it's good or bad for the gaming community as a whole. Let me know what games you're looking forward to in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.